receive the word, the bread, and the blood. May you see victory in your life in the name of Jesus. May you never encounter any breakdowns in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. May grace be upon you. May peace be upon you. May all the plans of the enemy over you be cancelled in Jesus' mighty name. I declare the blessing. I declare peace. I declare joy. May the anointing be so strong upon your life that you may excel, increase, and be lifted, and the Lord be glorified over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that nothing will take advantage of you. I pray that the enemy will not force anything against you in the name of Jesus. And I pray that peace be yours. May God divinely surprise somebody here in Jesus' mighty name. I bless you. Receive the blessing. Amen. regularly. Those who may watch us later, you're welcome. We've enjoyed 2021 as a season of experiencing God's faithfulness and God has continued to be good to us. We pray and declare that wherever you are, whatever you're doing, the blessing of God may be yours, peace may reign over your life, and that the journey of fruitfulness, the journey of peace and joy be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. I bless you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Last week we looked at uh, the purpose of the crossover. We learned that the purpose is an achievement. It's a journey. Hallelujah. A purpose is a plan and intention and a dream that you want to achieve. So God has a purpose as well for you to achieve and learn and enjoy certain things in life. If you look at life many years ago, you have many things to thank God for. Hallelujah. And you have many things to appreciate God because when you look back, you look at maybe as far back as your school time, you couldn't think that you'd be where you are today. So we thank God that there was a purpose of God in our lives, and that purpose continues, it carries on. Amen. We learn that like joy or happiness or laughter, purpose is not a destination. It is a journey. Laughter is a journey of life. You can't laugh once and say, I laughed. Uh, one time so I don't have to love the rest of the time. You can't be happy one time and say I was happy in January so I don't have to be happy the rest of the time. Right? Purpose is a destiny uh, changer which allows us to get into a journey of enjoying what God has prepared for us. And in 2022 we know that God is preparing some wonderful things for us. Hallelujah. So there are certain things in our lives that give us a very satisfying uh, joy, a very satisfying way of life. They bring us to a level of dreaming again. They bring us to a point where we trust God again. They bring us to a level where we say there's nothing impossible with God. And in that purpose, we end up enjoying a meaningful life. You must always pray that God will give you a meaningful life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You must always trust God that there should be a meaningful life. A life where you say, I am so happy, I am so blessed. I am enjoying life. I am enjoying what God has prepared for me. My life has a purpose. It has a meaning. Glory be to God. So in purpose, we can access purpose and the crossover at different ages. We learned that all of us do have the potential, amen, to enjoy what God has intended for us. And in this journey, we are crossing over. As we cross over, we learn a few things. We say, number one of the point, you need to deal with fear. There are people who carry fear every generation. They were afraid five days ago. They are still afraid today. That is not the portion of a child of God. Hallelujah. Deal with fear. The things that frightened you before must never frighten you again. There are people who were frightened of witchcraft. Witchcraft must never continue to frighten you in the mighty name of Jesus. There are people who are afraid of failing. The failure that you faced in the past must not frighten you to think that you fail again. Can I hear an amen in the house? 
So deal with fear as we move on. In order to enjoy the purpose of the crossover, to enjoy life in abundance, you have to deal with fear. Whatever caused fear in your life, wherever it came from, whatever happened, whatever incidents you went through, money loss or somebody threatening you, or you lost a job or whatever it is, you deal with that fear. Glory be to God. The Bible showed us how God dealt with the Egyptians. And uh, he said, do not be afraid, because the Egyptians you see today, you never see them again. Say, I'll never see them again. <laughs> Say, my fear will never rise up again. In the name of Jesus. Say, whatever weapon the enemy used against me, it shall not make me afraid. Glory be to God. So if you're going to deal with fear, number B, we learn that you need to be positive. Hallelujah. In order to prepare for the crossover, you need to be positive. Amen. You need to be positive. You need to carry that mentality, that inner strength, that inner yourself, your real you, you know, the, the, the one created by God. You need to carry that into the new season. Hallelujah. You need to be positive. You need to look at life positively and make up your mind and declare that God is on your side and that's all you need. Amen. When you condition yourself to the best, you will always get the best. When you condition yourself to the future, you will enter into the future. When you prepare your mind and your heart into the best, you will always get the best. So God told the children of God, He said, stand still, you will see the hand of God. Be positive, you will see the hand of God. So you believe and you trust God. Amen. No matter what you see, believing is easier. Amen. Believing is easier no matter what you see. Believing is easier and it is the weapon that God uses to destroy the plans of the enemy. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Number three, we learn that you need to have a conviction. You need to have a conviction. You need to be convinced in your mind, in your spirit. You need to be convinced that God is doing something in your life. Hallelujah. Can I see all the convicted people say Amen. Amen. Say, I am convicted that God has a purpose over my life. Amen. Number four, you need to have strong faith. You need to have strong faith. Believing God without changing your mind. You need to have strong faith. Believing God without changing your mind. Without giving up. You need to have strong faith. Believing God regularly. Standing on what you believe. Believing God without changing your mind, no matter what comes the way, no matter what thoughts the enemy brings in your mind, believing God that the problem can never continue to exist. Hallelujah. Amen. Believing God that the frustration can no longer continue to carry on in your life. Believing God for the positive. Hallelujah. Amen. Believing God for the future. Believing God for the impossible. Believe in God that you are moving forward. Somebody say, I'm going forward. I'm going Somebody forward. say, I am going forward. Going forward. Being fully convinced that God will deliver you. Amen. That God will help you. That God will restore you. Enemies may be laughing at you, but you don't worry about the laughter of the enemies. You stand convinced that God will do something in your life. Doesn't matter who hates you. Doesn't matter who doesn't like you. It doesn't matter who's talking about you. What matters is you believe and you are convinced that I will come out of this situation in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Being convinced and believing God. That is the journey that we are going to go into in the crossover. Hallelujah. Believing God that the way will prevail and not the problem. Hallelujah. The way of God will prevail and not the problem. Believing God that the word of God will produce results and the solution is there. Amen. I love this. I'm enjoying this. I hope you are enjoying it. Believing God that God is bigger than little Lucifer. Hallelujah. That God is greater than little Lucifer in any situation. Believing God, trusting God and saying, I have a God in heaven. Who will never leave me nor forsake me. Praise the name of Jesus. Any people who are ready for the crossover this morning? Are you ready for the crossover? Glory be to God. 
We give God the glory if you are ready for the crossover. Amen. Alright, so today we just want to appreciate God for the season of 2021. So take my message, appreciating God's faithfulness for 2021. Appreciating God's faithfulness for 2021. 2021 has been a great year for us in many ways. God has been good to us and we live to appreciate Him. We live to say bye bye 2021, but we appreciate God for what He has done in our lives. Amen. It's been a good year in many ways. Number one, we still have life, we still are enjoying life. Number two, we still have a dream. Number three, we're still convicted that there's a future. Amen. Everybody take with me to the book of First Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 9. First Corinthians chapter number 1 and verse number 9. Glory be to God. Believing God and appreciating God for faithfulness. You see, what you appreciate for opens doors for God to do more in your life. Amen. But you don't believe God for, you cannot receive it in a greater form. Sometimes we also even have to appreciate the small little things that God has given us. You may have been praying and trusting God for something major, but God gave you certain things. We appreciate God for those. Are you in 1 Corinthians? Chapter number 1, verse 9. All right, everybody read. 1, 2, 3, go. A bit louder. Let's try again one more time. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Say so God is faithful. Say so God is faithful to me. Amen. So God is faithful. By whom we were called unto fellowship with his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord. So in God's faithfulness, he called us to have fellowship with his son, our Lord and our Savior. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, it means you have not been called to the faithfulness of God. You cannot know the faithfulness of God until you know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Is there somebody here this morning, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior? If you are that person, can I see your hand? We'll pray for you and God will help you. Is there anybody in the house? There's nobody in the house. Praise the name of the Lord. So God is faithful. In his faithfulness, he has called us to fellowship with his son. Amen. He has called us to fellowship with his son. It is in the fellowship with our Lord Jesus Christ that we will experience and continue to experience God's faithfulness. If you don't have fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you may miss that experience. You need to have that fellowship. You need to have your own time when you read the Bible. You need to have your own time when you can pray. You need to have your own time when you say, this moment, these 30 minutes are for God. This one hour is for the Lord, for me to fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That way, you will experience His faithfulness. Amen. Now, in His faithfulness, we learn that God can never change his nature. He can never change his nature. His nature is that of continuous faithfulness. His nature is that of abundant faithfulness. God's character is that he is always faithful even when we are unfaithful. He can never change his nature. Hallelujah. Praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are certain people you encounter in life and you can tell, that is his nature. I saw him five years ago like that. That is his nature. Amen? And to carry that nature is wonderful, even for us as children of God. To carry a nature that comes from God within us. So when people see you for five years later, they must see the nature of Christ inside you. They must see the faithfulness of God inside you. They must see the attribute of God inside you. They must never say, oh, we know her. Uh, the way we saw her five years ago or ten years ago. In the nature of God, in his faithfulness, God keeps a nature that is formidable. It is a nature of integrity. It is a nature of principles. It is a nature of knowing uh, his loyalty knowing his faithfulness. So the same with us. A man is counted by his character. A man is known by his abilities. 
A man is known by his principles. So God keeps this nature of being faithful. As it was written in this last week, I remember the nature of God. That he provides the rain. Every season, the rain will come. Last year, I remember uh, in Cape Town, it was a bit dry, and people were concerned, and everybody was saying the water levels are going down. But God in his faithfulness, he released the rain. So he will always continue to, to, to release what he has promised for us because of his nature. He cannot change his mind. Hallelujah. He will always operate in his nature. So in his nature, we receive a lot of wonderful things. Because again, one of the things we learn is that because he's faithful, we can believe in his nature and in his word. Amen. So whether a person says, I do not believe or not, does not change the faithfulness of God. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 13. Whether a person says, I do not believe, does not change the nature of God. God remains faithful to what he has said. Glory be to God. Second Timothy. Second, Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. If we believe not, yet he abided faithful, he cannot deny himself. He cannot deny himself. Say, my God cannot deny himself. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if we believe not, if we do not believe, for some reason, if we do not believe, some people convince you, I don't believe. You meet somebody who says, I don't believe. I don't think God is faithful. I do not believe. I do not believe. It does not change the nature of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It does not change the nature of God. The Bible says, whether we believe or not, He abides faithfully. He remains faithfully. I love God. Amen. Hallelujah. On that night when you are frustrated and you feel like God is not answering your prayers, He has not changed. Yeah. On that night when you feel this is it, this is the end, He does not change His nature. He remains to be faithful. Yeah. Say, I have a faithful God. Yeah. Say, I praise God, He is a faithful God. Yeah. So whether you believe it or you don't, does not matter. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the name of Jesus. Whether you believe it or not, it does not matter. So I thank God that we believe. Hallelujah. We are on that side where we believe. We are on the side where we believe, we trust God, we know. And because we believe, He will continue to be faithful to us even in 2022. Glory be to God. Say, God will be faithful to me in 2022. Amen. Alright, so pillar number one this morning, knowing God's faithfulness. So in the season, we got to know God's faithfulness, knowing God's faithfulness. How did we know God's faithfulness? We knew God's faithfulness through many, many wonderful blessings. Hallelujah. Now, obviously, I taught you in the year that, uh, first of all, the word knowing means you need to have this great discernment. You need to have this yada spirit in you. To know is to yada, is to be convicted is to be graced with anointing to say, I believe nothing will change my mind. Hallelujah. You know within your heart and nobody can change what you believe. No matter what they say, you say, I know God is there. I know God will help me. When people say, why are you still going to that church? Why are you still believing? Why are you still doing 21 days of prayer and fasting? You say, because I know, I am convinced. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. You have this aroma around you. You have this, 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 this wonderful flavor about you. And in your heart, you are convinced. Let's look at Job. Job says something about knowing God. Job chapter 19 and verse number 25. You know God because he is a God who keeps his word. Job chapter 19 verse 25. He said, for I know. Amen. This is Job. Now Job went through a difficult time. If you remember his story, he went through a very difficult time. It was challenge after challenge. At a particular season, the enemy was just gunning for Job. He went for Job. 
Again, he came back for Job. He went for Job. And then Job rises up in chapter 19, verse 25. He says, For I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that my God is alive. I know that my God still loves me. I know that my God has never changed his plans over my life. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I know my Redeemer lives. Say, I know my Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. And then he says, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. No, is to adapt. Hallelujah. It's to descend. So he says, I know. I know. I know. I know. I am guaranteed. I have no doubt. I know God will answer me. You can tell me I don't know how to pray, but the little prayer that I know, God will answer that little prayer. You can tell me I don't know how to believe, but the little faith I have, I know. I have this conviction inside me. I have this discernment inside me that God will turn around my situation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. To know with conviction. It doesn't matter how old you are becoming in life. You say, I know I will still enjoy life. Some of you, you say, I missed my teenage. I wish I was a teenager. There were things I missed. It doesn't matter. You say now, I know that God has a future for me. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. You, you stand uh, in front of your mirror and you come and you find there's nothing to come in the middle here. Uh, you can only come on the sides. Uh, it doesn't matter. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You say, I know. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Some of you, you judge yourself by what the mirror shows you. You see a bald head and you say, yo, oh, I'm getting old. Have you not seen some young people with a bald head? Hallelujah. So you say, I know. You can even trust God to say, I know my hair was too grown. Ah, you missed it, you missed it, you missed it. To know, to be convinced, to have this deep faith inside you and say, I descend it. I can feel it. It's moving in my body. It's moving in my spirit. I know God will do something. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In the faithfulness of God, we also learn, number one, that he keeps covenant. He's a covenant keeping God. He has kept his covenant. In the season of 2021, we say it. God told us to say that it would be a year to experience his faithfulness. And he kept the covenant. And he's still keeping the covenant. So God keeps the covenant. Amen. He keeps covenant. Covenant is a relationship that is divine. It's a relationship between the divine God and the human man. Hallelujah. Covenant is when God steps in the man's situation and he says, where you have failed, I will help you. Covenant is when the greatest comes in your situation and he shows you how great he is to make you great. Did you hear what I said? Covenant is when the greatest God Almighty steps in your situation, in his greatness, and raises you up to be a great individual. Somebody say amen. amen. So he keeps covenant. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse number 9. He keeps covenant. He will keep covenant and he continues to keep covenant. Glory be to God. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse number 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy to them that love him, and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Hallelujah. To how many generations? To how many generations? Not one generation, not two generations, not three generations, to thousands of generations. So God keeps covenant. He is a covenant keeping God. He does not deny himself. Even when we let him down, God keeps covenant. He's a covenant keeping God. God is faithful to keep his covenant. He cannot deny his character. He cannot deny his personality. He says, when you fail, I'll come in and help you. When you struggle, I'll step in your situation to lift you. When you are down, I'll raise you up so that you don't remain down. When you are weak, I'll strengthen you. When you are broke, I'll give you money. 
when you are at zero, I'll make you a multi-millionaire. Glory be to God. He is a covenant-keeping God. He never denies himself and the grace for us to enjoy the covenant. Hallelujah. So knowing God's covenant is also to remember uh, that in his word, as he has promised, you've got to stick your spirit to the word. You've got to connect your spirit to the word. You've got to connect your, your, your understanding to the word of God and declare that God will never deny me. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So you believe and believe and believe and continue believing. Let me tell you a secret. Do you know that if you believe on something, the devil cannot kill you? Just because you believe it and you want it. As you believe into something, whatever it is, maybe it's a material thing, maybe it's school education, the enemy will try and try but will never get you. Amen. Amen. Because in believing, you have set your goal. You say, next year, in two years, in five years, in ten years, whatever, I must reach there. So by believing only, you are releasing yourself to connect to something of the future. By believing only, you are setting your spirit, man, to walk into that destiny. And so God keeps covenant. And as he keeps covenant, as we believe, we will see the faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God. Amen. Number two, God is faithful to his word. I want you to always remember that no single word of God will ever fall over your life. First Kings chapter 8. First Kings chapter 8, verse number 56. God is as good as his word. God will never compromise his word. Not a single word will miss God's mark. Amen. God's word will always and always be accurate on our lives. Amen. Amen. First Kings chapter 8. First Kings chapter 8, verse 56. Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people Israel. Mm -hmm. According to all that he promised, mm -hmm. there has not failed one word of all his good promise, mm -hmm. which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. Hallelujah. Somebody bless the Lord. Amen. Say, I bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Say, I bless, the Lord. I bless the Lord. The Bible says, Blessed be the Lord. He has given rest to his people. Some of you need the rest. Rest from worry. Rest from financial issues. Rest from sickness and disease. Rest from all this negative news. God is faithful to his word. You can receive rest. You can have peace in the middle of the pandemic. God is genuinely able to give you that rest. Amen. Believe the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Believe the word. Believe the word. The word is God's promise. It never misses the mark. It will never miss a target. It will never fail to bring you results. Believe the word. So he says, blessed be the Lord, for he gives Israel rest. Now, you and I are not Israel, but we are people of God. So we can put ourselves in there and say, he will give me rest. Somebody say, he will give me rest. Whatever it is, say, God will give me rest. In the name of Jesus. Say, I deserve rest. Say, I deserve rest. The enemy is a liar. I will have rest from all my problems, all the issues of life. In Jesus' name. Now, that does not mean you will die, then you have rest. Uh -uh. When you are alive, you will have rest. Hallelujah. When you are alive, you will have rest. Glory be to God. Why will you have rest? The Bible says because he promised. He promised. The word says because according to all that he has promised, 
His word has never failed. Not one word has failed. Not even a comma has failed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In any scripture you read, not even a semicolon or whatever has failed. The anointing in the word of God will never fail. The presence of God in the character of his word can never fail. You are set for a good journey. You are set for a good future. Amen. You are set to make it further than where you are. Because his word will never fail. So believe in his word. His word is everything. His word is God's genuineness in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. I went to my son and I went somewhere. We wanted to buy something. And we were looking at uh, certain shoes. And uh, I said, that's a nice pair of shoes. And uh, Mr. Mono says, ah, daddy, that's not genuine. I looked at him. Then he started to explain. He says, you see this sign, all right? After some time it will fade and people will know it was not genuine. God cannot be like that. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? God can never be like that. Amen. Even when you buy genuine material things, at some time they fade off, they don't look genuine. God never fades off. He is always genuine and his word is genuine. And the Bible says the word will never miss a mark. The word will never fall to the ground. The accurate word of God is coming into your situation in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Find yourself in the word. Find your blessings in the word. Find the promises of God in the word. Live in the word. It is holiday time. It is not holiday for the devil. You and I in your holiday, you still read your Bible. You still pray. You don't say, you know, I spent the whole year being in church. Now I'm on holiday. Bible there and uh, prayer there and anointing oil there and everything there. Ah, ah. The Bible says the devil is like a rolling lion seeking whom to devour. So you stay in the word. It is the way that has brought you this far. You continue in the way. You stay in the way. You believe the way. You remember the promises of God. You say, Father, you are saying it in your way. There's a genuineness in your way. Your word is incorruptible. Your word is a blessing to me. Your word has carried me in the two years of the pandemic. And your word, you see me through the pandemic. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. The way to take us further and further in life until the Lord Jesus Christ comes to take us all. The way it is life. That's why we never had the death in the church. And I guarantee you, if we stay in the way, we will never have another death in the church. Glory be to God. Praise the name of Jesus. Say, I love the way. Say, God is faithful. And I love his way. Amen. Pillar number two, you need to continue to trust God for his faithfulness. You need to continue to trust God for his faithfulness. So just because 2021 is finishing doesn't mean, uh, you see, it was only 2021 when I was supposed to experience God's faithfulness. You continue in 2022, 2023, 2024, whatever year, you continue to trust God for his faithfulness. What does that mean? Number one, you hold on to faith. You hold on to your love for God. You hold on to faith. Psalms number 31. Psalms chapter 31 verse number 23. You hold on to faith. Holding on to your faith. Clinging on to your faith. Psalms 31 verse 23. Psalms chapter 21 verse 31 verse 23. All are the Lord, all you his servants, his saints. For the Lord preserved the faithful and plentifully rewarded the proud joy. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, Oh, love the Lord. All you people just continue to do what? Love the Lord. Amen. Say, I shall love the Lord. Can I see the lovers of God raise their hands in this house? So you do what? You love the Lord. Oh, love the Lord, all your saints. Love the Lord. Love the Lord. Whatever you do, love God. 
Whatever you do, continue to love God. Love the Lord. Hallelujah. Love the Lord. Love Him. Keep loving Him. I love Jesus. I love the Holy Spirit. I love God Almighty. Praise the name of Jesus. Raise your hand and swear after me. Say, My Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Today, I declare I hate Satan. I hate the devil. I hate little Lucifer. I hate demons. I hate the work of Satan in the name of Jesus. And I am here to declare that I love you, my God. I love you, my Father. I love you, Holy Spirit. I love you, Lord Jesus. I love your word. I love your promises. I love the anointing. I love grace. I love your beauty. I love your genuineness. I love you for loving me in the name of Jesus. Say amen to your confession. Hallelujah. You do what? You love God. Not for a short season. You continue to love God. You don't love God because he has done good things for you. After that you disappear. Uh -huh. You love God throughout your life. You love God every day. You love God every week. You don't love God only because it's Sunday. You love God on Monday. Hallelujah. You don't say, no, I remember in December. That is when I lost my husband. So on this particular day, I'll just stay home and not love God. Ah, ah. You love God. You still come to the house of God. You still appreciate God. You love God. By doing that, you are holding on to your faith. You are believing God for the impossible. Praise the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, as you love God, you saints, He will preserve you in His faithfulness. He will keep you in His faithfulness. You see, loving God is important. You can love man who disappoints you, but God will never disappoint you. You can love certain people for a short period. After that, maybe they move to another town. You don't see them, so your love is not really there. But God, we have to love on a daily basis. You wake up and you say, God, I want you to know I just love you. This day, you don't have a specific prayer item to God. You just say, Lord, today I just want to tell you that I love you. That's all I want to say, God. I love you. I appreciate you. Holy Spirit, I love you. Amen. You declare, I love you. I look at myself. I remember when I was in school. I know how many friends have died but you have kept me. I want you to know I love you. I remember the days and years of struggle, but I know now life has opened up for me. So I want you to know, God, all I want to say is that I love you. Glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. So you love God. You continue to love God and enjoy Him. As you do that, you will experience and trust God more and more. And then you'll be holding on to your faith. There's a woman in the Bible, her name is Sarah. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 11. This woman loved God and exercised her faith. And there's some blessings that she received in trusting God's faithfulness. Because God is faithful, there are certain blessings that you and I can receive as you love God. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered from the child when she was past age. Hallelujah. There are three things I picked in that verse. Number one, Sarah was given strength to deliver. Sarah was given strength to deliver. You will be given strength to deliver. You will be given strength to deliver. Like Sarah. Sarah was given strength to deliver. In this particular situation, Sarah was given strength to deliver a baby. You, your baby, may not be a physical baby. Maybe a baby of the blessing. Maybe a baby of the business. Maybe a baby for the future. Maybe a baby of grace. I don't know. But God gave Sarah strength to deliver. Hallelujah. So Sarah received physical energy to do certain things. There are people who when they reach December, they are so tired. They look worn out. And you just need 
the new strength to carry in the new year. Hallelujah. So God will give you that strength. Praise the name of Jesus. God restores us. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall do what? Renew their strength. As you are in the presence of God, God will renew your energy. God can renew physical energy. He is a frail woman by the name Sarah. So we can advance in age. But the Bible says God gave her strength. Physical strength. Hallelujah. Say, so Heavenly Father, I need physical strength. I need physical strength. Strength in my body. Strength in my mind. In the name of Jesus. Strength in my mentality. Strength in my mentality. I need it. Grant it to me. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Some of you need that strength in your mind. That strength in your mind. The way you started the journey in January. The same power. The same grace. The same ability to think strong. You need that. And so God gave this into Sarah. Renewed her mind. Renewed her energy. She thought positively again. She looked to the future again. And decided there is a life after this. There's a moment when your body is tired. You can handle that. But when your mind is tired, you even start to think slow. You even forget things that you should not be forgetting. And so that's why you need God to do what? To give you that strength. Amen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So God gave Sarah energy, strength to deliver. Strength in her heart, strength in her body, and strength in the mind. If the devil can break down your mind, he may break down the journey of your life. If the devil can convince you it can never happen, it may look impossible to you, yet it is there for you. Put your hand on your head and say, Father, give me strength in my mind. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Number two, God gave Sarah grace to forget the past. Grace to forget the past. Grace to forget the past. In the same verse, Hebrews 11, 11. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to receive, to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past the age, when she was beyond the age, when she had passed a certain period where it was said, it is impossible. The Bible says God did what? Gave Sarah the grace. You need grace. You need grace to forget the struggles. You need grace to forget that which the enemy has taken away from you. To pass a certain level in life. To go beyond and trust God and say, God, 2021 maybe was not the best year for me. But you need grace to move forward. I remember at such a profitable job. I used to plan this and this, but the enemy took it away because of uh, uh, Corona or whatever it is. You need grace to go beyond that. Hallelujah. You need grace to go beyond that. Sarah was given grace to go past her age. How old are you, Sarah? Oh no, I am 80. So at 80, this is my history. So in order to enter into the new journey, you need grace to say when you are 81, now you are like an 18 year old child. Somebody can say amen. amen. The Bible says God gave Sarah grace to go beyond her past. Faith was required for Sarah to know that God is still the same God. Number three, Sarah not to a uh, grace, uh, rather strength not to lose the blessing. Strength not to lose the blessing. Sarah was given the strength not to lose the blessing. 
So through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child. Was delivered of a child. When you reach a certain age in life, when you go through disappointment after disappointment, when God blesses you, it is very easy to think the devil may take it away. When you have worked hard and suddenly God has opened avenues for you, the enemy can convince you that it is easy for you to lose it. But we see how the Bible says, God gave Sarah strength to keep the blessing. Isaac grew, was born and he grew. Your Isaac will be born and will grow. Your Isaac in the business will be born and will grow. Your Isaac in your family will be born and will grow. Whatever is your Isaac, they will be born and they will grow in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I hear an amen? Can I hear an amen? amen. Lastly, pillar number four. The key to the 21 days of prayer. As we approach 2022 in January, we start 21 days of prayer and fasting. What is the key? What is the key? Mark chapter 11 verse 24. What is the key? Mark chapter 11 verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray believe that you shall receive them and you shall have them hallelujah what is the key the key is number one desire have a desire for something better have a desire for something greater have a desire you see nobody can condemn you when you have desire Hallelujah. Have a desire. Have a desire for something to change in your life. Have a desire to see God do something miraculous. Have a desire for God to bring divine helpers in your life. Have a desire to say, God, 2022 must be better than 2021. Have a desire to say, God, my next six months in 2022 must be profitable. Have a desire. So he said, Whatsoever you do what you desire. Without desire, you can't pray. Desire is the door for you to start to know that I need to pray. Hallelujah. Without desire, many people are unable to pray. But with desire, people are able to dream. They're able to pray. They're able to trust. They're able to build themselves again. Amen. So after desire, number two is to start praying. You start praying. What is prayer? Prayer is pulling down principalities. Prayer is bringing down the powers of darkness. Prayer is to confirm that I have a desire and I must receive the blessing in my desire. Hallelujah. Number three, as you pray, you believe. Don't just pray, but believe. Hallelujah. Don't just pray, but do what? Believe. That your prayers are being answered. Believe that God will do it. Amen. Believe that your prayers are penetrating through heavens. Believe that there's no devil who can stop your prayers. Believe that the enemy can never challenge your prayers. Believe that your prayers are reaching the throne of heaven. Prayer is to bring down strongholds. Prayer is our weapon of warfare. Prayer is to bring down every power of Satan. Prayer is to bind the work of enemy. Prayer is to say, God, here I am. May fire be released in the kingdom of Satan as I pray. So you turn your house, your room, whatever it is, into a prayer closet. You turn your hours into a prayer closet. Some nights you may need to pray on your own without waiting for the program. As the Holy Spirit convicts you, prayer is to say, today I'm not eating. I may eat around 12 o'clock, it's okay, but I feel like praying. You engage into prayer. Don't take life for granted. The enemy is still out there. So you need to do what? You need to pray. Hallelujah. You need to find time to pray. You have a desire, then you start to pray, then you believe. Amen. And as you do that, God is faithful. 
So as we enter 2022, we shall be engaging in 2021 days of prayer and fasting. Why are we doing that? We are turning the situation around. We stopped begging the devil a long time ago. We command the devil. Amen. We never pray a prayer, devil, leave me alone. We tell the devil, devil, get out in Jesus' name. Amen. Prayer will bring you into a position of authority. Prayer will show you what is about to happen before it happens. Prayer will open your eyes to show you what the devil has been stealing and how much you want it back in your life. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. Prayer will protect you from the source of the enemy. Prayer will cause you to know who you are as a child of God. So you begin to do what? You begin to pray. You say, enough cell phone. Too many uh, uh, messages. Too many. I'll read them afterwards. I'll read them tomorrow. So every message you have to read. TT, you want to check. TT, you want to check. You're wasting your time. Sooner or later, you won't have the time to pray. It's not every WhatsApp you have to see. It's not every day you have to be on Facebook. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to see what's happening. No. Don't be a news reader. You want to know what's happening every day. There are moments you need to do what? Pray. Stand in prayer. Miss Facebook for three days and pray. Miss WhatsApp for a few hours and a few days and pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? Can I hear an amen? I want you to stir your spirit to prayer. January, February, March, now we are in December by prayer. If we were not praying, we don't know what would have happened. I believe if we pray more, the enemy will not even have a chance over our relatives. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Somebody say, I'm conquering by fire. Say, I'm conquering by fire. The Bible says, finally, number four, you shall receive. All the recipients stand up if you know you're going to receive. Hallelujah. Raise your hands before the Father like this. Say, Lord, I am going to receive. I am going to receive. The devil cannot stop me. I am going to receive. I am ready to receive. I am ready to receive. I am going to receive. That which the devil says is impossible. I am going to receive it in the name of Jesus. I cannot be denied. I cannot be denied. I cannot be frustrated. I am going to receive in the name of Jesus. I am a recipient of the blessing of God. I am a recipient of long life. I am a recipient of the blessing of God. I am a recipient of joy and peace. I receive my blessing. I receive my marriage. I receive my future. I receive my children. I receive my promotion. I am a recipient of God's blessing in the name of Jesus. By my hands, I shall touch it. By my eyes, I shall see it in the name of Jesus. Say glory be to God. Say glory be to God. Say I receive. I receive. And it can never be taken away. From me in Jesus' name. Put your hands together and appreciate God. You know what I Thank you.